Hi everybody, it's Rick Maranta from LabRat Learning. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a simple animation engine in Articulate Storyline 2. You can use this in Articulate 3 or Articulate Storyline 360 as well. A number of people have posted tutorials using similar techniques, but I thought I would share my own spin on it and tips that I found super helpful and provide a little bit more flexibility. I'm going to show you not only how to create a continuous animation on the screen, but also how to easily create a mechanism for toggling it on and off. In later videos, I hope to show you some more advanced techniques that you can use. Okay, let's uh, take a look. All right, let's first preview uh, where we're going. Here on the stage, you'll see that we have a bird-like, moth-like creature on the stage. And there are two buttons, one for fly and the other for stop flying. When I click fly, you'll see that the bird will start flying. And cycle through some frames. And then when I click stop flying, the bird will stop flying. Again, fly and stop flying. That's the basic uh, demo and uh, we're going to go through that but it can get much more complicated. Okay the first thing we want to do is import an image that has uh, a number of different states associated with it. So we'll import the first one which is the normal state and then we'll add a new state and we'll number this one and then we'll change the graphic to um, the second image. And we'll just keep doing that uh, for the rest of the states. This is a five frame fly cycles, so we'll do uh, a total of five frames, um, but the numbers will only go to four. I mean, this works because later on you'll see that the, um, the variables we play with start at zero anyway, so it actually works out pretty good. So we'll do the last couple. Um, you can import as many as you want uh, in, in this, with using this technique, but for our purposes, we're just gonna have uh, five frames. There you go, you can see that um, there's a little bit of a fly animation. All right, I uh, always like to change the name on the timeline to something meaningful from picture one so I call it bird it's not really a bird it could be a moth or some other creature <laughs> um, now uh, we want to uh, insert a couple of buttons on the stage um, the first one will be fly and we'll just do this for now and then we'll come back to these buttons later I'll show you how to do that so there's fly we're gonna duplicate that one Drag it over, and um, let's reposition it a bit, and call this Stop Flying. There you go. Next, we're going to create a new layer called Timer. This layer will provide the energy for the animation engine, kind of like the crankshaft. So what we're going to do here is insert a shape. Any shape will do. I like to use an arrow. So draw that out. Probably uh, change the color because we have a blue background to something nice like red. Now we're going to add a motion path onto it under animation. We're going to use a circle motion path But we want this um, arrow to go around the motion path continuously. So we create an, another trigger that um, moves the arrow around the motion path. Again, the um, circle path. When the animation completes, Uh, 
Okay, so what will happen here is that um, the arrow will go around continuously. So in order to show this, we need to create another trigger to show the uh, layer when the timeline starts. And this is something what we'll, we'll always have this layer showing, but we'll move the arrow off to the side later on. Might as well rename the base layer to something meaningful. And now let's take a look at what we have. Okay, so our arrow is going around and around continuously um, as long as the layer is displaying. But that's a bit slow um, for our purposes. You'll see later on, what we need to do is change the uh, speed to um, one-tenth of a second. So we'll reduce that down and then we'll preview it again. You'll see that it goes around quite fast. All right, now that we have our animation uh, set up, what we want to do is go back to the timer layer and create a new variable. But here it's already set up because I already did it in the other slide, you'll see, and the value, default value should be zero. This is an important uh, variable that we need to set up. So let's create a new trigger and we will adjust the timer layer and add one to it whenever the motion path of the arrow completes. So we'll go down to animation completes, the right arrow and the circle motion path. So this will add one to the variable. Uh, just to show you that, let's go back to the base layer and create a little bit of a debug layer, which I always do. So insert, um, a, not, actually not creating a layer, I'll just put it on the stage for now. Um, insert a text box and then let's insert a reference to the timer variable. Like that. And then let's change it to white. Oftentimes I'll create a whole layer with a bunch of default variables and I'll show that um, using a key press just to, so I can see what's going on. Let's name, uh, name that debug and we can so that we can hide that later on when we publish. All right, let's preview that and you'll see what's going on with the variable. Okay, so uh, there's one being added to the variable every time the uh, arrow goes around the motion path. Now we don't want that variable to keep going uh, infinitely. So what we need to do is to um, reset it by adjusting the variable timer to zero. So we're gonna say equals value zero when um, the variable changes timer. And we're going to put a condition that says when timer equals, so in this case, we're going to pick four because there's five frames to our animation, but you know, depending on how long your animation, we could set it to anything. So we're going to say four. And then uh, here you can see that when you preview it, it will uh, reset to zero whenever um, timer equals four. Now in order to make things start to happen we need to create a new layer and we're going to call this fly. And uh, let's first set each of these to not hide the previous the other layers because we want timer to stay on the screen all the time. And uh, we'll we'll turn fly on and off later on. So let's create a new um, trigger that will change the state of the bird uh, to one whenever the um, variable changes timer uh, to one. Okay, so uh, we'll we'll copy those uh, that trigger, and we'll um, we'll set each to um, to change the state to the appropriate state depending on one what number the variable is at. So uh, the first one actually will set 
um, when it hits zero, we're going to have it uh, change the state to normal. So we want it to change the state to normal when um, the variable goes to zero. And then uh, from then on, we'll, we'll change it to two. And uh, when the variable hits two, to state three when the variable hits three and to four when the variable hits four. Okay. So now you can see that um, this layer will actually uh, create the motion based on the variable changing. Let's now move that um, arrow off to the side on the timer layer so that you don't see that. Okay. Now that we have everything in place, let's go back and set up two triggers on the buttons. Uh, for the fly button, we will uh, set it to show the fly layer when you click on it. And for the stop flying, we will hide the layer fly when you click on it. There you go. Let's um, preview that and you can see how it works. All right. So now you just click fly and we show the fly layer. And when you say stop flying, we hide the fly layer, which basically connects the uh, animations, the state changes to the variable changes. But that's not uh, what, exactly what we want because it'll just stop on the, uh, the state that it, it is when you press stop. So what we want to do is add one more uh, trigger. So we'll uh, add uh, a new trigger. That we'll, so that we'll change the state of um, the bird to normal when, uh, when the stop flying is clicked. So it, just so that it doesn't, it goes back to the normal state rather than stops right in the middle. All right, let's move that up. And then as you can, okay, let's preview that again. Just so you can see that we want to end on the, the first, uh, the normal um, state instead of just stopping in the middle of the state changes. Okay, now that we've done all that, this should conceivably work in HTML5 output. There's no reason for it. It works perfectly in flash output and during the preview, but for some reason, when you output this to HTML5, the little guy here starts animating right from the beginning of the timeline and the buttons don't work properly. I still don't understand why it's happening because I, we don't show the make fly layer uh, until you press the button, but somehow um, it's, it's generating the animation. But we can fix this. What we need to do is create a new variable called fly, and I've already done that here. And we'll, we'll set that to true or false, and we'll, the default value will be false. Then what we'll do is on each of the buttons, uh, the fly button will set set fly to true when the user clicks, and when the stop flying button will set fly to false when the user clicks. Now what we have to do is and go go into the make fly layer, and add that as a condition to each of the state changes. So here I've added um, and fly equals to true. So uh, this state change will only happen if the fly variable is set to true. And I've done that for each of them. And that's it. Um, if any of you have a reason why that's not working, or perhaps it's working properly in uh, Articulate Storyline 360 without those triggers. Um, but I can't figure it out. Anyways, uh, that works fine. And um, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'm looking forward to making another video uh, regarding some of these um, animation uh, techniques. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.